Welcome to the SELA episode of the Christian Men at Work podcast. We're in between my interviews with Christian men. I talk about five things. S is something on my heart. E is an example of faith at work. L is logos or a passage from scripture related to work. A is an announcement. And H is a handy tip to help you be more effective at your work. Men at Work, welcome to episode 136, which is SELA episode 47. And the title of this episode is, Are You Extreme? There's been a lot of talk about extremism in our political and cultural landscape. Basically, each side, whichever side of a particular issue or identity that we're, is being considered, each side is more and more calling those who disagree with them extreme as a pejorative term or as a way to criticize, minimalize, or belittle someone. In many ways, I've been learning that a moderated approach to life is best, especially when being too committed and energized by something becomes an idol for us. I believe there's one exception to this rule of moderation, and that is when it comes to our faith. We will be increasingly pressured to be more quote-unquote tolerant of other spiritual beliefs, and to acknowledge and agree with the idea that all spiritual beliefs and moral ideas are equivalent. Or we'll be pressured to just, quote-unquote, lighten up and not make everything about religion, or to compartmentalize our lives and keep religion out of um, other areas of life, including our work. Uh, I've been listening to The Screwtape Letters, a book written by C.S. Lewis in the 1940s, The book is a fictional series of letters from Screwtape to his nephew, Wormwood. Uh, They are demons or some type of agents of Satan. And the discussion is about how Wormwood can be more effective at drawing the human that he's responsible for away from God and toward Satan. In chapter 9, Screwtape says, quote, A moderated religion is as good to us as no religion at all. And I thought that was pretty powerful. So make sure you're following the Bible, of course, uh, and not doctrines of men. But if you are, then don't listen to those who say you're too extreme about your religion or spending too much time on it, caring too much about it. Uh, I think a recent devotion from Brian Biggers from Lamb's Chapel in Burlington at uh, TLC Alive uh, speaks to this issue in in a a way that I I thought was worth sharing with you. The title of the devotion, and this came out on um, May 12th, uh, a first light devotion, and it's called Decisive People. And it starts with a quote from 1 Kings 18, verse 21. How long will you waffle between two choices? If the Lord is God, then follow him, exclamation point. Indecisiveness gets people killed, physically and spiritually. To waffle is to stand between two paths and struggle to make a decision firmly and then go in that direction. It killed Ahab, the king of Israel. He wanted to follow God, but he wanted to live in sexual immorality more. Caught in a tug of war, he could not choose decisively and was destroyed. Ananias wanted to serve God and be part of what he was doing in the earth, but he wanted to serve money more. His waffling killed him. John Mark wanted to be a missionary and experience the adventure of taking the gospel to people, but his fear paralyzed him. He couldn't choose between following God and trusting him to protect him and playing it safe and protecting himself. It cost him. The landscape of history is littered with stories of missed opportunities, failed adventures, destroyed homes, churches, and nations, because people could not make a firm decision and stick with it. God calls his people to be decisive people. We need to make up our minds that when the choice arrives to decide between two paths, we will, without hesitation, choose to obey God and follow what the Bible says to do. End of discussion. If I have to choose between forgiveness and bitterness, the decision is already made. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Don't need time to think about it. If I am at the crossroads of truth or lying, the decision is made. 
Same goes for anything else that is clearly defined as God's will in his word. The enemy of our souls is constantly calling us to tarry between right and wrong. Think about it, he whispers, as he makes the wrong decision look so appealing. There's one response to waffling between two opinions. Follow me. Once I've made the ultimate decision to follow Jesus in everything, life becomes very simple and wonderful. Father, I've decided to follow your son, period. Next is E, an example of faith at work. And I don't really have an individual to highlight other than Al Mohler, who puts out a great podcast called The Briefing. It's a daily analysis of current events from a Christian worldview. And on May 19th, he talked about the issue of work. And I I thought about, you know, pulling some highlights from that podcast, but I really think I won't do justice to it. So I would encourage you to check it out. For those of you who are interested in this issue of faith and work, um, Al talks about the really the crisis we're having in our country right now where um, businesses can't find people who are willing to work, and there's various factors there, including uh, all these unemployment checks that are being carried over. Um, but it's a bigger issue than that, in my opinion, and, and in Al's opinion, a deterioration of the work ethic in our country. And he comes at it from a biblical point of view. He talks about what the Bible has to say about work, and I just thought it was excellent. So I just encourage you, check it out, The Briefing by Al Mohler, May 19th. Uh, Al is Logos, a scripture that I'd like to share. And this also came from that Al Mohler podcast. And Al mentioned that one of his life verses is John 9, verse 4, New King James. And I thought it was interesting that I really hadn't focused on this verse much uh, from the faith at work perspective, but it's so powerful. And in it, Jesus said, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day, the night is coming when no one can work. And I think that's so appropriate and should be motivating for us. Um, I believe we're in the end times. Uh, Don't know the details. Nobody does. But these are not normal times, and I think we really need to be doing the works of him who sent us while it is day, because night is coming. Next is A, and I'm going to continue my apologetics tips from Ben LaCourt. And today I would like to share that it helps to know a bit about someone's belief system in advance. Um, You have to ask questions, but you can narrow down your questions with some knowledge. And so if you're going to engage with someone who has a particular belief system, you may know it by a label, like you might know that they claim to be Mormon or Muslim or what have you. And, And in that sense, you might be able to do a little general research. But some of the best research is just to ask them questions and find out what it is they really believe with the intent of just gathering information and learning about them without necessarily offering anything, at least at that stage in the game. Next is uh, H, uh, continuing our series on time management uh, from our interview with John Shirey. And I would like to share that um, John shared that you just need to set goals. This will help you realize when you're doing something unimportant. Train yourself so that you can be set free. So that's it for our SEAL episode this week. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. God bless. Love you.